All right, guys, I'm squatted down holding a camera so we can fit the Balestro sisters in. <laughs> um, they are taking me to a family that they know here in Taguig. Yes. In Taguig. And they grew up here, and this family is one that they know personally. So we're running into the grocery store right now, and we're going to grab groceries and get them some gifts and go visit them and bless them this Christmas season. So, again, this is Jonah. Hi. Wait a minute. Let me turn it to where I can see you. <laughs> Do I got you? This is Jonah and Julie. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see all right, so we are loaded up, boxed up groceries. Got up here in the back seat. Julianne, Jonah, her sister, they picked out an outfit for this lady also. Got her some perfume, and along with groceries, just some personal items. And I can't help but get excited when this opportunity comes to show up and just surprise and bless a family. You kind of feel like Santa Claus, and it's just a really awesome feeling. Of, and an awesome blessing to an honor just to be able to do it. So we are on our way now. We are in Taguig, Philippines. They let me drive their car today, which is really scary because traffic here is is kind of a nightmare. So, all right, guys. So I'm here with Jonah, Jonah Balestro. She. She's going to tell you a little bit about this area and how these families um, ended up staying in the homes that they're in. So, go ahead. All right, so uh, we are here in Taguig City. Uh, this is in a place where uh, just last March, 25 to be exact, where the fire happened. So um, you can see all of these houses, these tiny houses where um, the government allowed them to build, uh, just pinch their little houses there because of the, um, you know, they, they don't have yet the relocation, the good relocation for them to stay. So uh, we're here uh, to one of the families that uh, will be helping out today. So we're just gonna be, uh, you know, giving them the box of uh, presents. As in traditional Filipino culture, as a stranger, I was welcomed into their humble home without hesitation. I was greeted with warm smiles and felt the love inside those walls made of scrapboards and metal. I learned the parents of the family we were coming to visit were at work. This was their sister's home. She had two children of her own and had stayed home today to babysit her nieces. So the gift of groceries will now be shared by two families, and I'm thankful for that. There was no way after meeting these children that I could say this food is not for you. Their smiles bless me more my small gift ever blessed them. As we walked to the relocation area where the families would now live, I learned that when their homes were burned, they were on government-given property. They owned the home legally, but not the land, so the government set up a new piece of property for them to build on. They will now have to move to this area on November 10th of this year, whether or not they are ready, because it is up to the families to rebuild their new home, and most of them will not have the funds to do so. Each experience of Mission Manila is unique in its own way. Each time I have the privilege of helping a family, I ask myself, why did I wait till 46 to take on this mission? Well, I know why. Like most of us, our lives are busy, even hectic. Raising a family, holding a job, struggling with our own financial obligations. Life, it moves fast. And I am blessed to be in this position, to have this opportunity. My vision, my dream, and my hope 
is that one day very soon, Mission Manila will grow, and my vision will be supported and shared by you. And instead of bringing a small box of groceries to a family, we can build them a home. Instead of just visiting and promote, promoting the life-saving institutions we call orphanages, Mission Manila can support them financially, and maybe one day soon, even build an orphanage and fill it with children who are in desperate need of love and care.